Hello, and a great big welcome to the second part of the Ultimate OBS Setup Guide. If you want to level up your stream, you're going to love this video. My name's Danny, and I stream over on twitch.tv slash dannyvals. In part one, we covered installing OBS in a way that is easy to make backups, and we also configured our settings to make sure we're streaming and recording with the best quality possible. Today's video, though, is a lot of fun. We're going to cover downloading and installing plugins to really increase the production value of our stream, setting up our scenes in a logical, manageable way, and finally, setting up source transitions so we can show and hide things in a visually pleasing way. There's also going to be tips, advice, and some general best practices along the way. If you haven't seen part one, you can click up here right now to go ahead and watch it. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. That being said, on to part two. We're going to kick off with plugins. Plugins are basically third-party extensions to OBS that give extra functionality that OBS doesn't have by default. There are loads and loads of amazing plugins out there, but one name you're going to see time and again is Exceldro. This guy has made so many amazing plugins, he's like a living legend in the OBS community. And we're actually going to go ahead and install some of his plugins now. Down in the description, you'll see links to all the plugins we'll be using today, and I'll give a brief explanation of what each one does as we use them. Now you'll find most OBS plugins in the OBS forum under the plugins section, funnily enough. To install a plugin from the forum, simply click the download button in the top right, and then you make sure you download the zip version. This is going to allow us to extract the plugin directly into our OBS directory, rather than using an auto installer. And this means that we can back up plugins along with the rest of OBS when we're making our backups like we discussed in part one. It's also worth checking the installation section of each plugin, because on the plugins page, sometimes additional files are needed, such as in this case, where we see we need to install the latest Visual C++ Redist for Visual Studio 2019. You might find that some plugins live on GitHub instead of the OBS forums, such as this blur filter here. Installing these is very similar. Over on the project page, you should just go down to the releases section, and then simply click on the zip file as you did on the OBS forums. Regardless of where you get your plugins from though, the installation process is exactly the same. Simply extract the files into your OBS directory. In some cases, it may ask if you want to overwrite some files, but it's safe to say yes. If you're a bit dubious about overwriting core files, fear not. Because we're using the portable version of OBS with all the settings and configurations saved in that one folder, you can just back up the folder before making any changes. If anything breaks, you can just overwrite the existing version with your backup version. Once you have all of your plugins installed, you should just be able to launch up OBS and that'll be working. If OBS was open when you were doing the installation, I would say close it, reopen it, and you should be good. If you're following along with this video, I would say pause me now, download all the plugins from the description and get them set up, because we'll be using them later. Next, we're gonna set up our scenes. I like to use this concept of broadcast scenes and reference scenes, where broadcast scenes are the ones we actually show on our stream, and reference scenes are the building blocks that make up the broadcast scenes. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will shortly. Down here in the scenes panel, we're going to create a couple of scenes that we're not actually going to use, but instead are going to be used as separators in our list of scenes just to help keep things organized. Let's go ahead and create a new scene, and we'll call it equals equals reference equals equals. We can go ahead and rename this existing one equals equals broadcast equals equals. I'm using these equal signs to help distinguish these as dividers and not actual scenes to use, but you can use any symbol you like. So let's start off with these reference scenes. I'm doing this guide with the assumption you're a gaming streamer, but if you're an artist or a musician or something else, just adapt this accordingly. We're going to create our gameplay scene and we'll call it dash r dash gameplay. The dash r dash is once again to help keep things organized, so we know if we see this scene name in other parts of OBS, it's a reference scene. This scene is, as you probably guessed, going to include our gameplay. One thing I'd recommend is using a holding image so that before your game is loaded in, or in the event your game crashes, you're not just showing a black screen. Here, we're going to use the famous SMPTE bars, but you can use whatever you like. Maybe you could make your own game loading image or an animated loading bar. There are loads of possibilities here. To add an image, you can right click onto the sources pane, go to add and select image. We'll call this game holding image. Locate the file you want to use and select it. In a general sense, I'd highly recommend ticking the unload image we're not showing box just to save our memory. For a small image like this though, there shouldn't be too much impact. And if you do choose to only load this image when it's needed, it might mean that your image only pops in once the scene is loaded, and it doesn't look too great. We then click OK, right click the game holding image, and we go to Transform, Stretch to Screen. This is going to make it so your holding image takes up the full width and height of the scene. Of course, if your image isn't the same size as your canvas, it may distort the image somewhat, so do bear this in mind. We then need to include a game capture source so we can take our gameplay and use it within OBS. Right click the sources pane and go to add game capture. Call it whatever you like and press OK. Set the capture mode to capture foreground window with hotkey and we'll set this hotkey up in a little bit. When we press OK, you'll notice there's this tiny red square up in the corner. This means that when we capture our game, it'll start up in the top left corner of the canvas and this element will stretch dynamically to the game's size. If you're gaming at a resolution that is different to your canvas size, the game actually won't take up the full screen. Often you don't actually want this and you'll want your gameplay to take up the full size. 
One way to accomplish this would be to right click a game capture source, go to transform and click either fit to screen or stretch to screen. If you use fit and your game aspect ratio is different to your stream, it means that the image won't be all distorted. And if you stretch, well, this stretches it. Both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages, so see what works best for you. Of course, if you're using a capture card, using this game capture won't actually grab it, so we'll need to add an extra source. You can go to add, video capture device, and then call this the same as your capture card. In my case, it's an Elgato HD60S Plus. We then press OK and pick our capture card from the list of devices. You'll then want to scroll down to resolution slash FPS type and set custom. So we can set this to the same as the canvas size. Again, this is just to make sure we're not accidentally showing part of the holding image, unless of course that's something you actually want to do. If we scroll down, we'll see color space and color range. Have a test of each of these different options and see what works best for your console. Once you're happy with everything, you can press OK. Now, if you have a capture card and you've set up a custom resolution like we've just done, if you're not playing a game, we're just going to be broadcasting a black square. You probably don't want to do that. So let's set up a hotkey to enable and disable the source. To do that, we can go into settings, hotkeys, and then in the filter, we'll look for the name of our capture card source. So Elgato. As I mentioned in the last video, we'll want to set this to a key combination we're not going to accidentally press. Control, Alt, Shift, and another button works wonders. Here I'm going to set the show to Control, Alt, Shift, apostrophe, and to hide, Control, Alt, Shift, hash. Press OK, and then when we press these buttons, hide, show, hide, show. That's a bit abrupt though, so to make it a little nicer on our viewers, we're going to set up a transition. We can right click the source, go to show transition, and we'll set fade. We'll do the same for hide transition, and then when you're showing or hiding the source, it'll fade in and out nicely. While we're here, we should also set up the hotkey we'll be using to capture our game that's not coming through a capture card. In the filter section, we will look for capture, and under capture foreground window, again, we set this to a combination that we're not going to accidentally press, control, alt, shift, and semicolon. We can then press OK, find a game we want to capture, press the hotkey, and there it is. Next, we're going to set up a scene to display what's commonly called a supporter bar or a supporter stack, a stack being vertical and a bar, of course, being horizontal. This is a chance to give some recognition to people who've supported your stream in some way. For instance, you could show the name of the most recent tipper or super chat, or the latest subscriber. There are loads of things you can do with this. So let's create a new scene called R Supporter Bar. And what we're going to do is take a video that I've made ahead of time and overlay some info onto that. So down in the sources pane, we go to add, media source, and we'll call it Supporter Bar. From there, we'll open up the video I made earlier called Supporter Bar. Make sure it loops. Untick show nothing when playback ends and make sure we close the file when it's inactive. Press OK and then we can drag it where we want on the stream. Here it's going to be at the bottom of the scene. As you can see it snaps nicely into the bottom but if you wanted more control over this you can hold the control key and move the element around freely. You can also right click the canvas, go to preview scaling and set it to canvas. With space held down you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel and left click to drag the preview around. This is fantastic for when you need pixel perfect placement. Once you're happy with how your element appears, be sure to click the padlock icon to secure it into place. We then go into the preview scaling and set it back to scale to window. You'll see here that I've got three separate icons in my supporter bar. This is for subscriber, bits because I'm a Twitch streamer, and donation. In order to add the relevant text, we're going to set up a text source for each of these by going to add text GDI plus. We'll call this one subscriber and add some dummy text for now. I can then pick a font that I like. So let's say uh, Montserrat light and we'll set the size to 36 point. Press OK to see these changes, and what we'll do now is select Read from File. This will link the text source to a file written to by external software, and any updates to this file's content will automatically be reflected in the displayed text. There are all sorts of apps that can do this, but the easiest to use is probably Stream Labels, and there's a link to it down in the description. For testing though, you can do what I've done and simply make up some test files. I'm going to go to Browse, Latest Subscriber, and there we go. You can then go through the various options, setting the color, the opacity, and any styling that you like. I'm gonna set the color to my signature badass green. And then at the very bottom, you'll see use custom text extents. You can click that, scroll down to the bottom, and this is gonna let us set a maximum width and height for our text, so it doesn't spill over into the next field. In my case, we wanna use about 320 pixels. What I'm gonna do is place it in approximately the right location, and then deselect it, go to preview scaling canvas, and scroll down to the bottom. Repeat this for each element in your supporter bar, and you should have something that looks a bit like this. Next, we're going to set up a scene for any overlays we might want to use. These are things we want to display on top of other content. It could be an alert box, shout out, sponsor messages, that kind of a thing. We're going to go down to the scene section, 
go to add and create dash r dash overlays. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna to go to add image and I'm gonna call this sponsorship and add this image from HelloFresh from back when I did a cooking stream. I'm gonna press okay, change the preview scaling back to scale to window and I'm gonna center it vertically by clicking the source, right clicking, going to transform and then center vertically. Then to make things look a little nicer and more dynamic, I'm gonna add some transitions. I'm gonna right click the source, go to show transition and set it to slide to the right. Then for the hide, I'll do the same thing, but set the hide transition to slide to the left. Then when we show or hide the source, it'll slide in nicely. Of course, that's a little quick, so we can always go into the source transition and set the duration to a second. Same for the hide transition. Now when we click show or hide, it looks a lot nicer. I also want to add my alert box so a little animation and a message appears when somebody subscribes, donates, etc. Again, there are loads of different ways of doing alert boxes, but I'm gonna use the one from streamlabs.com. I'll add it by going to the sources pane, going to add browser. We'll call it alert box, press okay, and then paste in the URL. Width and height can remain the same, and we're just gonna scroll down a little bit and make sure that shutdown source were not visible and refresh browser when scene becomes active are both unticked. Press okay. And then we can right click our alert box, transform and center horizontally. Now when we get a follow or a raid or something, we have a little message that celebrates it. Of course, resize and place this wherever it makes sense for you. I'd also like to add the support bar that we created earlier as well. So we're gonna add our very first nested scene. To do that, right click in the sources pane, go to add scene. Here under add existing, we have a list of all the scenes in OBS. And you can see now why we use this R prefix just to keep things separated. When you have dozens of scenes, being able to locate reference scenes with a prefix makes a huge difference. Once we've selected our support of our scene, we can click OK. As mentioned in my 10 things to do before your first stream video, it's worth being careful when displaying people's usernames on your stream. If someone interacts with a username that's hateful or violates the terms of service of the platform you're using, it makes for a really crappy time for all concerned. With this in mind, we're gonna make it so that if we show or hide the support bar with a hotkey, it moves in and out gracefully. Right click the support bar scene in the sources pane, and then we'll set the show transition to slide up. For the hide transition, we'll set it to slide down. Set the transition duration for both of these to 1300 milliseconds. Then lock everything in place. And you'll see when we show or hide the supporter bar, it moves in and out nicely. The great thing about using nested scenes is if we need to hide something, we can do it with a single hotkey and not have to bind a hotkey for the background and each individual supporter bar element. For our last reference scene, we're gonna add our webcam. So we'll create our scene once again by going to the scenes pane going to add and calling it our webcam. Once we're on our scene, we'll add a source and select video capture device. I'm gonna call it primary webcam and press okay. We can then pick which device we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and set up what is seemingly every streamer's first webcam, the Logitech C920. Select it from the device list and then we'll go down to resolution and set it to custom. Now the C920 is a 1080p webcam, but usually your webcam is just gonna be a small square on your stream. So actually using full HD, it's not really necessary. Feel free to set this to 720p instead for a little less processing overhead or set it to 1080p. Either way, we're gonna set the source to be the full width of the canvas. If we scroll down the video format, we're gonna to set to MJPEG. In my experience, this keeps things nice and smooth in the event that low light compensation kicks in. For the color space, we're gonna set it to Rec 601 and the color range will be full. Of course, for your webcam, this may be different, so do play around the settings and see what works best for you. We can then press OK. If, like me, your webcam is partially obscured, here you're behind the monitor, you can actually crop out parts of the source that you don't want to display. To do this, hold the Alt key and then just drag until the part that you want to remove is no longer there. Now we're gonna crop it here so that the aspect ratio is approximately the same as the canvas. Then we can right click the source, go to transform and fit to screen. If like this you see black bars, you can hold the Alt key and just stretch things out as needed. So I'm gonna go a little more on the left and a little more on the right as well. Once you're happy with that, you can right click again, go to transform and then stretch the screen. This just means that when you're fitting, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect. Of course, if you have multiple webcams, there's nothing stopping you from embedding them all in this one scene. If you then bind turning these cameras on and off with hotkeys, you've got the ability to show different camera angles or do a smash cut. For instance, I can go in here and go to add video capture device and use my recording webcam. I can pick my OBS virtual camera and then drag my prime webcam above 
and you can see I've got the ability to instantly smash cut. The last thing we're going to do on this scene, for now at least, is set up one of the plugins we installed earlier. Using the Source Record plugin, it gives us the ability to record just our webcam, or indeed any source, so we've got a dedicated recording of it in full quality. If you're making content for TikTok or YouTube Shorts, having a webcam only recording can really improve visual quality. If we go over to the Scenes panel, we can right click our webcam, go to Filters, and then press this plus button here. From here, we can press the Source Record button, call it Source Record or indeed anything you like, and press OK. Now here we're going to set the recording format to be MKV, for the exact same reasons as we discussed in the last part of the video. And then we scroll down and the recording settings should be similar to what you set up in the last video. Scrolling back up, we've got the record mode here. None, always, streaming, recording, streaming or recording, or virtual camera. None is of course, don't record this. Always is when this is enabled, the recording will start. Streaming is for when you're streaming, recording is when you're recording, Streaming or recording, unsurprisingly, is both. The virtual camera setting can basically be ignored. Back when this plugin was first created, OBS didn't have the ability to use any source as a webcam, but now it does. And that is it for this part of the Ultimate OBS Setup Guide. Part three is coming really soon and it's a good one. I should know, I've recorded it already. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on part three and do let me know if you found anything in this video useful. If you wanna watch another video, right here. I've been Danny, I'll catch you on the next one.